Almost ready to go, peoples. People's court, folks that are out there. Can you see me? Recording in progress. We're almost ready to go here. We're waiting for our guest uh, guest speaker to come along as well. Um, just getting things going, audience. Just hang tight. It seems like Anna, Anna's there as well. There she is. Now, thank you so much for your patience. I had some, uh, I had to update the Zoom. Oh, okay, I have to update Zoom. Uh, Good. How do I pronounce your name? That's correct, Shivande. All right. Nice good, good, good. All right, hold on, everyone. Hold on. I had to stop some things here. One second here. Hold on, hold on. All right, good morning to our Blake Media listeners out there and our Facebook listeners. And I also added a, a what is that? Twitter to our broadcast today as well. So uh, this is Dr. Blake here on a, a Blake Media with the Actionable, Actionable Financial Literacy Center. And just want to have everyone um, uh, let you know that we have a guest speaker on today. Uh, I have two of them. I have my uh, one wonderful daughter, my baby girl, Cup Captain. Uh, I was going to say cupcake, Captain uh, Captain Blake, U.S. Army, and then I have our special speaker, um, uh, Miss Anna Stasia. I can't get, I don't want to guess your the last name there, but Anna is going to be here to share with us as well. So um, today, 
um, we're going to be talking about uh, relationships this week and next week. Next week, I have a guest going to be shared as well. But uh, Anna, thank you for being here today. And uh, would you like to share with our audience a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Dr. Joe Blake and Chevronda. I hope I got it right. So I call a, a cupcake. Excuse me? I call a cupcake, but that's okay. okay. Well, I like cupcakes, but okay. So a little bit about, <laughs> about me. I'm Polish, as you can hear my um, beautiful accent. I came to the United States two years ago. I was studying psychology in Barcelona for five years. So I do speak Spanish. Uh, for those who would like to have a session with me uh, who are from Mexico, for example, I, I am comfortable with Spanish as well. And a little bit about me, what I do right now. I uh, recently released a book, a um, multi-author book, uh, Intuitive Sing Her Truth. And yeah, we got to be a best international bestseller it was a really cool experience to be co-authoring. And behind me, I have the mirror, uh, mirror view, so I need to move on the left. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's the exposed documentary, which um, shows 90 stories of survivors from uh, five different continents. Um, and I had this beautiful op opportunity to interview all of them, ask them questions not only about healing, but also about shifting to thriving, what does it take to really. Um, there are also authors, psychologists, therapists, lawyers. Um, so um, the purpose of the documentary was to bring the hope that um, no matter of the situation, you are not alone when you're living abusive relationships. Um, and also to bring strategies or ways of healing, right? That's why the idea of therapies and coaches specialize in narcissistic recovery abuse came. Um, it came actually to my head just before we get to the next question in 2018, December 6th, when I left my abusive relationship that back okay. in Barcelona. Okay. So and that's a, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the next question because we have a few, a few questions that help us go along. Was the one is a, 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 describe for us a, what is a, an un unhealthy relationship? Right. So um, I love this question. That's actually a question I asked those 90 survivors. <laughs> so what was for them that moment when they discovered it was unhealthy, right? Mm -hmm. Because of um, we are, um, many of you know about the attachment styles, right? Like how we learn the first relationship with our parent um, and how that we model that in a mirror in our romantic relationships, the first relationship we have with parents, right? So uh, a healthy relationship we could define as um, pushing our boundaries, as making um, us feel unsafe um, and very intense. Um, I specifically talk about narcissistic relationships as uh, that's the main focus of this documentary. So if something feels really like a, like a fairy tale, <laughs> that's how many of those 90 beautiful ladies I interviewed felt like, like, oh my God, all my previous relationships were so boring. <laughs> like comparing to this one, this is, you know, you get the candies, they put you on pedestal. You're like, oh, I've been waiting for you all my life. You're perfect. Like I make you sandwiches. I, I clean for you for the first, you know, three weeks. And you feel like, wow, I could have that. And they give you, you know, those, you feel like that princess, like in those movies from Disney. So you get to feel all that, which was missing in your childhood, right? So you got that attention, you got that, you know, juice, spice. Mm. And all the good very, things. What? I say all the good things wrapped into one. Right, right. <laughs> and then that's, and that's uh, when, when you discover there is, inconsistency that will be the next thing lack of consistency okay and that's because so, i asked a question there how do you identify uh recognize or, or, or address those issues um so 
from which perspective? From the perspective of, of um, me as a, I left the relationship, or from the well, no, just in, in general. You know, when someone uh, you know, once you you you're in the honeymoon phase, and then you. Oh, okay. Right. So, well, the funny thing is that um, I mean, interesting thing is that almost all those ninety people I interviewed, they didn't know they were in abusive relationships until they left the relationship and they went for therapy because of, um, but I will answer to your question as well. I just wanted to make a point okay. that the lack of education makes us be a target, right? But how you identify um, is simply by having community, friends, people you talk with. <laughs> so not allowing somebody to isolate you, right? And what I do recommend also, uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing on my own journey as well, is to have a therapist or psychologist, somebody you meet maybe once, two weeks, one month, once a month, and um, somebody who can see things from different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. That actually, uh, that, that would help me. I went through three artistic relationships. So in the last one, Actually, it was a therapist who was like, hey, <laughs> this is a red flag. Like, this guy is just trying to convince you that you are the bad, you know, the, uh, the bad sheep, the black sheep, right? And because of my personality and just being a pleasing person, I always took the blame and kind of tried to earn the love. Like, I would fix, every, do everything what I could, always try to, you know, do my best, uh -huh. hoping that... Um, that my good heart will change the whole world, right? So, um, so there will be the few things, right? So first, um, have your own space, right? I will say, be still, sit, go somewhere, maybe in nature, so you can really get back to your body. I believe there is a huge body wisdom, our GPS, and uh, and when we breathe, something amazing really happens. We are able to connect, um, relax, and feel all those feelings we've been suppressing, especially with unsafe people, right? We tend to suppress our feelings yeah. as an empath. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. So you say, you say go to nature. Is that like uh, um, go camping, something like that? Or? It could be, yeah, <laughs> like the background you have. Hiking or walking, maybe. Is it, a, is it a cupcake? I said hiking or walking, maybe. Yeah, hiking or walking, right? Whatever feels good for you, what makes you feel relaxed, right? Because for some people, it will be just uh, sitting on the sand, right? And other people, like me, I like hiking and I just like to get lost a little. I don't see where is the exit. And I'm like, I'm really feeling I'm somewhere else. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, so so it, whatever makes I'm you not feel... Hmm? <laughs> what, what is yours? I said, I'm not hiking. <laughs> I'm too old for that. <laughs> I like walking though. I do walking. Walking kind of because it kind of stretches you out some. Uh, you know, you you know, you can feel you you know get the air in your lungs, get get the stress out, and that that's all good. You know, feel that feels fine. But you start walking, and I got to see the exit though. You know, I gotta. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a you know firefighter at heart. Uh, back then, I can go inside a building. Everything's darked out, and I can feel my way out. I'm to the age now. I got to see where the X is at. Is it, all right, you can get out over there. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I can't do like you do, uh, Anna. Go in there. Me and Kari will go for miles. You can go for miles. Mm -hmm. Get the dog, put his vest on, and we go. Oh no, man! I got to see the exit. <laughs> yeah, and with dog, you, you well. He can always guide you back, right? Because they kind of like to remember the way back. So it's, it seems safer. Also, in case there are some coyotes. <laughs> All right, so we, we distracted a little bit from the topic, but um, so I, I how have, to identify. Yeah, go ahead. I have another question. What causes uh, repetitive relationships to be pervasive? So someone to go into the same type of relationship over and over again. What causes that to be? That is a great question. That's one of the main questions I also ask during the documentary interviews. And the, and the answer is those childhood traumas. So um, we just repeat the, uh, same, the same cycle in our adult 
uh, our adult relationships, right? So what happens is that um, through the romantic relationship, we hope to solve the childhood trauma. So let's say in childhood, we didn't get that attention or the, it doesn't mean the parent was, you know, like dangerous. It can mean that the parent had a lot of work, was inconsistent, was going to work. And, you know, or I'm saying the techie very, it could be, a, you know, whoever was, because of, we tend to have, you know, different type of parents. Um, so that take giver was not inconsistent and we developed this anxiety uh, and start to uh, stop to, and we stop to trust that the parent will come back, right? So, um, so that's exactly what uh, we model in our adult relationship. We're looking for somebody who is one time, who is there one time and then disappears. So I don't know if any of you can relate with the situation like when I was in my relationship, it felt really normal when the person you know, was really bombarding me with a lot of messages and then disappear. I was like, yeah, cool. And then they come back and again, and it could be like one week gone, one, one week they're back and you feel like nothing else, like nothing different than it was. Like your brain is really familiar with that cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so why we keep um, attracting, they say, the same people is that we, we are really attracting ourselves right? I believe, in my perspective, that uh, those relationships are for us to awake our the highest self, narcissistic relationships, especially. They're awaking us to, uh, to discover who we really truly are, as spiritual human beings, and um, how much is there more, how there's no limits, really, right? So when you're in a narcissistic relationship, the opposite of that person, I mean, your partner, either is woman or man, they tend to be really like um, ego-centered, all about me. Um, they like that prize. They want to worship them, admire them, uh, to sacrifice everything for them. They want all that energy and they suck that life from you, right? So it's mm. like a spiritual game, literally. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. You know, I've been married to the same woman for 24 years, so I wake up and it's like, well, it's you again. You know, last night you were kind of sleeping, the walls were moving, girl. So we were with the same woman. But uh, um, that was my next question, actually. When one does wake up, and they wake up and they realize that they're, they're awake now, and they discover their purpose, and they discover who they are, what do you do with that? Mm, I would say um, that's a great question. <laughs> I would say it's very individual, right? Because of most people think there is one answer for, for everything and they look just for that quick answer. What should I do right away, fast? <laughs> and the truth is we get to discover our own path and that's what life really is about, right? Mm -hmm. So that patience, and that um, curiosity, I would say. And I would, I would love to give you one answer, but I feel that um, that all the audience, um, anybody who's listening to us, that they get, that's what life is about. That um, passion to discover uh, what's next, um, right? So, I believe we we always underestimate our possibilities. I mean, at least the people who are <laughs> not like narcissistic, <laughs> we tend to make ourselves smaller. And um, because of all the conditioning, the culture and the competition mindset, right? At least in the United States, I'm talking about that. Uh, so yes. especially as a woman and the um, kind of the idea of the patriarchy. Um, so, so to answer your question, which I'm also looking for that, right? What's next there for on that path of self-discovery? And um, and that's, I think, what is creates the beauty of life, right? Because of if we knew, <laughs> then it will be, you know, kind of boring. 
Yeah. And, um, and we get to decide, I think, because of, you know, if you decide that this is how much you can achieve in life or do impact, then that's what you're going to get, right? But there's always next layer, next layer. Like yeah. when you when you are thinking to buy a, for example, um, to buy a meal for a homeless person, somebody else is thinking about opening worldwide foundation to feed, you know, Africa <laughs> or Asia. So there is um, that pl- from that place of understanding who we really are, right? Being centered and grounded really helps to don't react to whatever is happening around us, to know that we have the power to create our own possibilities or opportunities, right? right. So when the market is crashed, I have my own market. <laughs> right. Okay. Create uh, the opportunities. I don't need to wait for somebody to save me or, right? Right. To be so right. grounded and reliable and trusting yourself that, um, you know, no coronavirus can um, crash you <laughs> or anything, <laughs> whatever ha- happens in the future, right? And I think we are living in the times when we are becoming more and more aware about um, the superpowers, especially as a woman. Like I am, I am so grateful for, you know, all the women who came before me so I can be today where I am today, mm-hmm. right? Yep. With my funny accent and all stuff <laughs> because of without all they work, it would be impossible for us women now be treated equal as men, right? And have the power to speak, the power to create. And um, and I just want to applaud all the women for listening it. And also men, because there's many men like you invited me, Joe, today, right? Um, yeah. Empowering women speaking, that's something very beautiful. I want to acknowledge you for that as well. Yeah. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Well, no. You know, cupcake and those. I grew, my mom was a single parent, and it was just me and my sister. So I always, when that, you know, I think about that, and because my mom was a strong woman, very strong, wasn't she, cupcake? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, <And> she was. <laughs> <laughs> my mother would let you know how it is, and 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 because of my mom, it is is how I am. I mean, the book that I, I wrote that became a bestseller. It was I dedicated to my mother and a lot of things that I learned in life was about that. And I taught my daughter a lot of things, too. And, uh, you know, one of the things one one of the many things I told my, my daughter was like told her to build her life before she became a wife. And Cupcake kind of held on to that right there. And but she's she became powerful. Mm-hmm. She's got her own home. She got her own uh, home uh, car and got her, her degrees and everything and commanding folks and. She's gone further than, I mean, she's done a lot more than her daddy's done, you know, and she's held and held, has held her own. I am absolutely proud of my baby. I'm absolutely proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but I, that's something what um, inspires. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I know that sometimes relationship and money kind of go hand in hand. And so, I know money, so I make sure my my babies, all my babies, my girls, my girls and boys, they know money as well, and make sure that they have the understanding. So I wanted you to be able to share because you, because sometimes, sometimes you go through relationships and you go through that that period uh, where sometimes a relationship can break you, or sometimes a relationship can make you stronger. And I, I want people to know you you go through a relationship like that. And you come out on the other end, you want to be stronger. You don't want to fall apart. You don't want to just uh, uh, go from you know, hero to zero. You want to go from zero to a hero in your life. And and that's what that's what this is about. Um, I have another question for you here. Uh, what what platforms or what do you have available uh, where people can get a hold of you and and make things better for themselves? That's cool. Let me put in the chat maybe that exposednetwork.com. That's okay. where you can see the trailer for the documentary. We also have Facebook group on that website. And uh, we also have uh, services as a foundation. So we are a nonprofit, which is uh, providing therapy uh, one-on-one for uh, survivors of narcissistic relationships. Also legal consults with lawyers. 
and also educational media. And that's the idea of the expose as the first baby <laughs> to educate um, majority of people, right? We get to spread this documentary uh, for free to anybody worldwide to spread very basic knowledge, but still unknown knowledge, right? What we a little talk today about the red flags, boundaries, what are different ways of healing. So um, we have that platform, exposednetwork.com. I would that we also have Exposed Podcast, but that's all also on the, on the pages of the website. So, so okay. you're more than welcome. And if you are interested in a therapy, just um, click the button, notify me. There will be um, to put your email and I will be happy to connect you with our therapies and help you um, to go from to go to hero, not from zero. I know you are not on zero, but you go to hero. <laughs> yeah, go to go to hero. Okay. Um, uh, last question here is: What are your thoughts on financial literacy? I don't know if I've shared that with you, but financial literacy. Right. So I uh, I actually read a little bit about you and what you are doing, and uh, and I also you know Doctor Well. Do you know Dr. Di Martini? I've, I've heard of it. Yeah, it, it, I was uh, recently reading his books, and um, and I just wanted to say something. Uh, well, thank you for what you are doing because of that's really important for me, and I'm a beginner in that financial literacy. Um, so it is for me uh, next next step, and also. Um, the opposite, I think, of financial literacy, which, which is the earning, saving, and um, just having healthy habits around money, right? So you create your own market, your own economy, mm -hmm. which is not um, moved by whatever is happening around, right? Those habits. Uh, so the opposite of that, as you are in a relationship, it's uh, being financially dependent. And I see, I found that 70% of people I interviewed, they were financially depending on their spouse. That was the only one reason why they didn't leave. Why didn't they leave? Because of they had no money and they had to leave many times just without money. Actually, they, you know, like with the baby on their hands and one pumpers or two pumpers and just running to the petrol station somewhere, they can get picked up by some bus train. So, um, in situations like that, I thought I also felt how um, money equal power, right? Mm -hmm. So we as a woman, we are not educated on all that uh, financial literacy brings, and we are our power is taken away, right? Mm -hmm. Because nowadays, um, the money really magnifies who you are. Right. The more money you are, you have. The more money you are, also, yeah. and we are the money at the end. That's the self worth, right? Yeah. Part of our identity, and um, and I feel that we are living in the world when finally we don't feel like being rich is, you know, like um, greedy or like um, that it's safe to be rich. Like for example, for me, I came from a very um, very humble family. So I was taught, you know, money, if you have a lot of money, go to hell. The money doesn't fall from the sky, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt unsafe to have money. Like I felt if I have money, then as a woman, um, like uh, I was afraid of the responsibility, right? Which money brings when you have money, right? And so, so it was self-sabotage for me for the last couple of years, right? Uh, of not allowing myself to be earning the money I could or charging people, right? So mm -hmm. I will just um, basically um, underestimate <laughs> myself, right? So uh, financial literacy, I think, is a huge um, step for us as a, not just women, but men to be, live in a free world, right? Without... Um, with the word of abundance, basically, right? So mm -hmm. that's what I would like to add to that. And thank you for asking me because of 
I see you as an expert in this topic. Yeah. And that's, that's why I wrote my book. Like I said, my mom was a single parent and she was, she had a rough, well, she had a rough time, but my mom ended up getting a job and she worked at a, at the state office in Maryland for 30 years. And it was money wise, it was tight for, but she put enough away. And I knew that women had a rough time with, when it came to money and putting it away. I saw that in my mom because she was a woman. And I made sure that my baby girl knew exactly what to do. Cupcake got some money. <laughs> She's She is good on her own. And like I said, you build your life before you become a wife. And then she said, that way, when I go get the man, we can make a dynasty. <laughs> so she's loaded. I mean, all right. She's, I'm not saying you better have some money when you come see my daughter. That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I got to say. Well, we like the sense of humor. <laughs> that's the type of advertisement. <laughs> but they like, you know, the healthy. Um, relationship you both have and I feel that it takes those role models right the right more, the more uh, we empower our children the more they are really ready for the world what, that is that next. is that is correct all right so uh we are, we're out of time for now uh we thank everybody for listening and uh, and joining us for today's broadcast has been Anna with an expose and it's been Dr. Blake actionable financial literacy we'll see all of you next week uh and uh, and yeah we have another relationship class next week you'll be here with us see you then